Well, hello, hello there, guys. Mr. G here with another lesson. Today we're going to be doing lesson five, and this lesson is going to be related to impulse. It's a new definition. It's a new concept. It's still related to the topic of momentum and impulse. Um, it's going to be impulse. You are going to see. It's a very easy definition. It's a very important. Um, please watch the explanation. Uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the, the support, uh, subscribe, and I'll see you uh, next time. This video is quite short, so I'll see you just in the next lesson. Thank you for watching, Mr. G here. Hey, Mr. G, and we are going to be doing another video on momentum. Uh, this time we're going to be doing impulse. This is going to be uh, the next lesson. It is lesson um, five, I believe. This is lesson five on impulse, and we're going to start by uh, defining impulse real fast. Now, impulse is the product of net force and time interval for which the force is acting. So it's the product of net force and time. Now, for impulse, the symbol we are going to use is letter J. For impulse, the letter we're going to use the symbol is letter capital J. J and is equal to the product of net force and time. Okay, this is impulse and it's a vector quantity. We're going to speak about that one just now. All right. Now there are important things to have in mind here about impulse. First of all, is that sometimes they use the symbol impulse. Uh, just in words, sometimes they use the symbol I, and sometimes they use just F net delta T as impulse. So they refer as either of them as impulse. That is the first very important thing we want to mention because it depends where you're studying, uh, what symbol they will use, and I don't want you to get confused. Second is the unit. The unit of impulse here, as you can see, is the product of uh, force and time. The force, the unit for force is a newton. The unit for time is second. Talking about the SI unit. And therefore, the unit for impulse is going to be the product of newton seconds. And you read it like that, newton second. No newtons per second because Newton per second means dividing. So the unit is Newton second, that is the unit for impulse. And the other thing that we're going to mention just before we carry on is that impulse is a vector. Impulse is a vector as always, it have magnitude and direction. magnitude and direction and it has which i'm going to write now same direction same direction as f net it have the same direction as the net force remember that the net force is the one that is going to cause that impulse or something that we're going to see just now okay so this here is the first important thing related to impulse. But now let's go to analyze quickly that uh, impulse the formula. We have that impulse is equal to force or net force multiplied by time, right? But you learn that net force is equal to the rate of change in momentum and this remember is newton's law in terms of momentum this one here newton's law in terms of momentum and as we can see here we can substitute this f net there and so let's do let's do that so we have that impulse is equal to change in momentum i'm substituting the newton's law in terms of momentum divided by time multiply to across here by time the momentum is um 
vector. And then you can see that the time cancel each other because time divided by time is one. Okay, so what we have at the end, we have that impulse is going to be equal to the change in momentum. And uh, lovely children, this is going to be a theorem. This is called impulse a momentum theorem and it's a very important theorem we're going to do going to use a lot impulse impulse momentum theorem and then let's speak very fast about this one let's speak real quick about this one here okay impulse uh, momentum theorem impulse is going to be equal to momentum the direction is going to be the same the magnitude is going to be the same but the unit still impulse unit is going to be a newtons a second units here for impulse still going to be newton second and the unit for momentum or change in momentum is still going to be kilograms meters per second now sometimes they accept Sometimes they accept the units because it's equivalent. They are not exactly the same thing. Impulse is impulse and change in momentum is change in momentum. They are equivalent. They have the same value, they have the same direction, but they're not the same thing. They're not the same thing. So this is important here and obvious now. From there, it may not be uh, necessarily, but from there, from there you can substitute the change in momentum. Now impulse is going to be equal to change in momentum, but change in momentum was the product of a mass uh, multiplied by final velocity minus mass multiplied by initial velocity. This was um, what we did before in changing momentum. So as usual, let's go and look at one example we've done before. We always do examples in the lessons and then we'll see. Okay. Now this example says the bullet of mass 20 grams strike a target at 300 meters per second. So this is the initial velocity and this is the mass of the bullet. So let's write here, this is a mass. This is initial velocity of the bullet. And exit at 200 meters per second. Here we have the final velocity of the bullet. This is final velocity, okay? The bullet takes 0 0.0001 seconds and this is the time that the bullet took to cross the, the, the target to pass through the target. Determine the change in momentum of the bullet and the impulse of the bullet. So as usual, let's uh, organize here the data quickly. So uh, data, what we have is that mass is equal to 20 grams. Remember, we cannot work in grams. We have to convert. This is going to be equal to 0 0.02 uh, kilograms. We have the initial velocity is equal to 300 meters per second. We have the final velocity is equal to 200 meters per second. Everything is moving in the same direction, so everything is going to be positive. Okay, we're not going to make a big thing here because everything is in the same direction. And the time that the bullet takes to cross that target is 0 0.0001 second. Okay, for A, we have to calculate the change in momentum of the bullet. So for A, we're looking for the change in momentum. Okay, now how do we calculate change in momentum? Real, real easy. Change in momentum, we just saw it top there, is equal to the product of mass and final velocity minus mass and initial velocity. Okay, so now, change in momentum, if we substitute, we have 0, 0,02 multiplied by the um, final velocity, which is 200. We could use the maths here, common factor, but never done it this way, so let's do it this time like this. So minus 0, 0,02 multiplied by 300, okay? So the change in momentum is going to be equal to minus 2, kilograms meters per second. This is the answer. Now, know the following, know the following. This is a negative answer. Now, what is negative answer? It's in the opposite direction to the original motion. 
So we are going to do that because they're asking you for momentum and momentum has magnitude and direction. So the change in momentum will be equal to two kilograms meters per second in the opposite direction. In the opposite direction. Okay, so this is the first one. This is A. Now, for B, they're asking you to calculate the impulse. B asking you to calculate the impulse of the um, um, bullet. And we are going to uh, use the theorem. Impulse is equal to change in momentum, which was calculated already. So impulse will be equal to 2 newton second. This is the unit for impulse in the opposite direction. And this is the question. It's quite simple. This question is quite simple. I hope you understand now. Note in this question, they could ask you to calculate the, the, the impulse straight, straight on. And then you would still have to calculate the change in momentum because they are equal one another. Okay. So now let's go to the other part of this short lesson. Now, in this new part of this lesson, we're going to be speaking about some graph that they can be drawn. Now, this graph could be graph of force versus time. So here we're going to have a graph of force versus time. Now, what we need to know here, if you have a graph of force versus time, the area under the graph will represent the impulse. For instance, this area here will represent the impulse. Depend the area. In this case, it's a triangle. So if you calculate the area of this little triangle, which will be obvious, um, half multiplied base and height of the triangle, that one will be equal to the impulse. So this is something important. Many times there are questions related to um, graphs and so on. And um, it's quite easy. The area under the graph will give you the impulse. And this is this lesson. It was quite short, this compared to the previous ones. Okay. So um, just going back, we learn about impulse. We learn the definition of impulse. We learn the impulse momentum theorem. It's very important and we're going to use it a lot. Then we look at one example where we have to calculate the change in momentum and the impulse. And finally, we learned that when you have a graph of force versus time, um, the area under the graph will be the impulse. Eventually, we are going to be doing some questions um, where you see graphs like this ones and you will, you will understand better. Uh, but this is the, the lesson of impulse. Thank you for watching. Um, the next lesson, we are going to be learning about the law of conservation of momentum. We're going to be learning about internal and external forces. And that's it. Um, I'll see you next time. This topic is almost done. This topic is almost done after the law of conservation of momentum. We just have something else to do and then some practice question. And then that's, that's it. Okay, this topic is almost done. But thank you for watching. Subscribe for the channel. Uh, ask question, thumb up, and I'll see you next time.